All right, I'm super excited to discuss the FHA loan with you today. Uh, big common myths, FHA, people always think, oh, it's for first time home buyers. You can't buy investment properties. FHA loan is not good for me. And it's just not the case now with these new guidelines, which I'm gonna start explaining today. Is your credit 500? No way can you get a loan. Well, you can now. Are you looking to buy an investment property that you live in, maybe rent out the other one, and you only wanna use 3.5% down payment? Well, you can now. With higher interest rates now, it's really, really hard to get approved for a loan. But with this FHA loan, which I'm gonna be discussing today in great length, plus the cons, which you do need to hear, I think you're gonna be really, really excited about what you can potentially do when buying a home with an FHA loan. All right, let's get to it. The FHA loan is gonna be a superpower to so many potential buyers. Do your research, give me a call, get familiar with it. You might think buying a home is just years away. It's not, it could be a lot sooner than you think. Call me. So FHA loan is the easiest loan to qualify for. If you think you can't get a loan, go speak to your lender about the FHA loan. It's a really amazing loan. An FHA loan is a loan insured by the Federal Housing Administration. Usually when lenders are giving out loans, you need to put down 20%, you need to have high credit. That way they know you're not gonna default on the loan and if you do, they're gonna get their money back. But on this FHA loan, and it's one of the main reasons I think people think it's for first time buyers, is because it's a bit more lax, the guidelines. Usually on a conventional loan, you really need a 650 minimum credit score. And the higher you go, the better rate you get. On these federal um, insured loans, you can have a credit score of 500. Now, bear in mind, most lenders are going to start at about 580, which is still obviously a low credit score. But there are lenders out there that's going to give you um, loans if you can find them for 500 plus. Also, how many first time buyers have 20% to put down, say on a half a million dollar home? You don't have just a hundred grand sitting in your bank, but with three and a half percent down, if you're buying a $500,000 home, you know, you've got 18 grand in the bank, there's your down payment. It's a lot easier for first time buyers. But I want to state right now this loan is for everyone. Even if you have lots of money in the bank, even if your credit score is 800 plus, if an FHA loan makes sense, which it can, especially if you're looking into investment properties, which I will talk about later, FHA can be used by everyone. I'm Matt Tilly, the British bloke. I'm a realtor. If you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe. And if you're thinking about moving to LA County or Orange County, check out my videos. I do neighborhood tours showing you all the areas. So if you are thinking about moving here, want to get more info, how much do the homes cost? Check out my YouTube channel. So what do you need to qualify for an FHA loan? Number one, one of the big things is your debt to income ratio. It needs to be less than 50% of your monthly income. So when the lender takes into consideration your monthly payment on the home, credit card debt, uh, student loans, maybe any medical fees you might be paying off monthly, it has to be less than 50% of what you earn each month. So say you earn $5,000 a month, income, a household, family. Everything needs to be less than two and a half thousand dollars a month in order to qualify. Also, if you work a W-2 job, a full-time job where you get paid every month, you need one year of payment history. Or if you're self-employed like myself, you need to be able to show two years of employment history. Plus on an FHA loan, you need to put at least three and a half percent down. Uh, for the down payment. Now, if your credit score is below 580, like I said, if your credit score is 500 to 580, you can still find lenders who will um, get you the loan, but then you need to put 10% down, plus closing costs, which is about 2% of the sale price of the home, in order to get the, um, the mortgage. And remember, that money, that down payment, needs to be in your bank for 60 days. They need to have seen two months of bank statements. You can't go take out a loan um, and use that as a down payment. However, you can get gifts. 
Maybe your parents want to lend you money. Maybe a family member or a friend. If they want to lend you money, they can write a letter, send that to your lender, and they will approve that. You can also use 401k, any savings, retirement savings you might have, and crypto. Crypto is pretty big right now. I know people are buying and selling crypto all the time. But once again, if the crypto is in your crypto account, lenders can't use that. It has to be liquidated out of the crypto account and into your bank account. So when you're thinking of getting pre-approved, ready to purchase a house, make sure the down payment has been in your bank account for at least 60 days. Then there's gonna be no delays or heartache if you can't get the home you want. Also, talk to your lender. Rental history can now also be accepted on this loan. That's great. First time buyers, you have a great rental history. You've always paid on time. Let your lender know, show them that, maybe get a, a referral or a reference from your landlord, and you can use that to help you qualify for the loan. That's awesome. And like I said, you are insured by the Federal Housing Administration. So lenders can breathe easy. If for some reason you can't pay your loan, you back out, it defaults, whatever, the lenders, the mortgage companies are insured by the FHA. They know they're going to get their money back. And because of that, they give you the loan. But you do have a 2.25% of the loan um, added in a monthly payment to your um, mortgage every month. That's kind of how they get it. You're paying a premium. You can't get a conventional loan, so you're going to be paying a 2.2% premium every month on your mortgage. And like I said, that's wrapped into the mortgage. You don't have to pay it out of pocket every month. You're going to know exactly how much you're paying each month before you close the deal. Now, if you put 10% down, that's 0.85% now uh, private mortgage insurance. And that will come off the loan after 11 years, which is great. But really, when you're doing FHA loans, if you ask me, you refinance at the first uh, possible opportunity to get onto a conventional loan. Maybe once you've got 20% equity in the house, maybe when your credit improves or you start earning more money, refinance. And you can refinance after the first year. You're not locked into an FHA loan for 30 years. So as soon as you can refinance, get into that conventional loan. You'll no longer be paying any uh, private mortgage insurance. So a common myth is once you get an FHA loan, you're locked into it for the life of the mortgage. It's just not the case. If your credit improves over one year period, which it can, credit can go up very quickly if you start paying off your credit cards and doing what the bank wants. And house prices have been going up quickly as well. You can easily gain 10, 15% equity in a home over a three or four year period. Recently, that's happened in less than a two year period. So um, the goal is to buy a house, get on the housing ladder using an FHA loan, and once you can qualify, jump in that conventional loan where you're no uh, longer paying extra monthly fees. And if this is all seeming a little confusing right now, I know it can, a lot of information to take in. There's a link below, just schedule a call with me, a free consultation, um, doesn't cost anything. You can get a little bit more information um, and I'll be more than happy to help. Also, another question I get uh, asked is, Matt, I live in California. I live in New York or you live somewhere where house prices are higher than most places in America. I'm not going to be able to get an FHA loan. That's just not the case. Yes, in most states in America, FHA loan means you can buy a home up to about $500,000, which for most people is fine. Obviously, in California, other expensive states, a $500,000 mortgage doesn't really get you much. However, in these states, you can go up to a million dollars. So if you're looking for a seven, eight, nine hundred thousand dollar home in Los Angeles, for example, FHA loan has you covered. You also might be asking, well, I have really good credit. I have 20% uh, down. Why would I use an FHA loan? And debt, debt is really only the reason then. Uh, FHA is more giving on your debt to income ratio. So yeah, if you have really great credit, really great income, you have the down payment, 20%, no big deal, but you have a crazy amount of debt and you can't get a conventional loan, FHA loans for you. Now you might be saying, Matt, this is great. Why isn't everyone using an FHA loan? What are the cons? There must be some. And yes, there is. For whatever reason, uh, in sellers' minds, in agents' minds, 
if they've got multiple offers, which has happened obviously a lot recently, if one's conventional, one's FHA, they're both exactly the same. For some reason, sellers, agents think FHA, the buyer's just not gonna be as qualified. Also, agents know when it comes to an FHA loan, the appraisal is a little bit more stricter. Conventional loans, they don't kind of care as much what the home looks like, as long as it's livable. With FHA, you've got to pass a few more tests. It can't be a fixer, it has to be move-in ready. You can't have broken windows or holes in the walls, which a conventional uh, loan will kind of turn a blind eye to. So once again, when uh, sellers, agents are looking at um, offers to compare, Another reason they don't necessarily like FHA loans is because the appraisal, a little bit harder to get through. Also, if you're buying a condo, before you even make the offer, check with the HOA. A lot of condo buildings do not accept FHA loans for whatever reason, but it's very, very common. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot do, but a lot don't. I would say maybe more don't than do. So before you even go see the house and fall in love with it, check uh, with the seller's agent, do they accept FHA loans? Don't waste your time if they don't. Also, another housing hack, which I just don't see used enough, I use it all the time and it usually works. Say you need more money to cover closing costs, ask the seller for credit and at close of escrow, that money will be in your account to cover closing costs. If you're buying a $500,000 home, I don't mean offer $500,000 and ask for $10,000 in closing costs. Offer 510,000, that extra 10 grand on a 30 year mortgage is gonna be peanuts when it comes to a monthly, but then they'll give you $10,000 of real money to go towards your closing costs. That can help significantly. You can actually ask up for 6% uh, in closing costs. So 6%, $500,000, $500,000 home, what's that? 30 grand, I don't recommend asking for 6%. I don't think you're gonna get it. But if you're buying a $500,000, $600,000 house and you ask for $10,000 in closing costs and you just add that 10 grand into your mortgage, there's a great chance they're gonna say yes, especially in a slow market like right now. Um, and it's just gonna help you out. Who doesn't want 10 grand, right? All right, I'm super excited to talk to you now about this housing hack. You gotta hear this, it could change your life. We all wanna buy investment properties, who doesn't? We know real estate is the way to make a lot of money and support your retirement. But most people don't have 25% down when it comes to buying investment properties. Say you're buying an investment property for half a million dollars. Who has 125 grand just sitting around, right? However, now the FHA loan now states that if you buy a duplex or a triplex or a fourplex and you live in one of those units, you can buy this multifamily unit with just three and a half percent down. It becomes so affordable. And guess what? You can also use 75% of the rental income on the other units to go towards qualifying for a mortgage. It really, really is an amazing thing right now, which more and more people need to know about and take advantage of. But wait, there's more. You might be like, Matt, but I don't wanna live in a duplex or an investment property. I've got a family. I just want to um, buy a home. You only need to live in this investment property for one year. At the end of that one year, you can rent it out. Now it's a completely rented out building and you can go and buy another home and you can use an FHA loan or a conventional loan if you qualify. So just because you buy this um, investment property on an FHA loan doesn't mean you have to live there forever. You can live there for one year. That is another amazing thing about this loan. Basically, you're buying an investment property for three and a half percent down. You have a beautiful duplex, triplex, fourplex in your area for say three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars you can buy this for less than $25,000 in cash. You wanna create generational wealth, you wanna secure your future, you've gotta look into buying investment properties using an FHA loan. Call me if you wanna talk more about it. Also, comment below if there's anything I've missed. What do you like about the FHA loan? Have you used the FHA loan? Or were there some cons that I didn't mention? 
Let's create a community. Hope to hear your comments and I will reply.